All our other friends thought we were just insane, right? Brian and Brian with another crazy idea. 13 states, six months, 3,500 miles. Rolling, rolling down the white water. Everything was going just fine, and then Brian heard his name. And I needed immediate medical attention. But you think it's good I can I should hit the water tomorrow, no problem? I think you do very well. Perfect. Brian's knee's good now. We just we just gotta hope he doesn't mess up the other one. My name is Brian. And this is my best buddy. And his name is Brian too. Out of all the water in the world, only 1% is fresh water. It's all we got, and we want to explore all of it. So we've decided to start with a trip that's never been done before. A 4,000 mile journey from Milk River, Alberta, all the way down to New Orleans, Louisiana. Oh, and did I mention we're gonna do it in a canoe? We're crazy? You're right. We're the paddling prime. Now we're back on the river and we're about midway between our launch point and Haver, Montana. Ready, buddy? Yeah. Push away! Further, 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 further. It's good to be back in the water, and, and today we're really gonna try and get as much mileage as we can. This is one of those high morale days, you know? When morale's high, it's higher than it's ever been, and when morale's low, it's like the low, lowest point you've ever felt. This first section has been full of delays, things slowing us down, injuries, shallow water. This is what it's like to hit a sandbar in the middle of the Milk River. We just simply hop out. It's pretty good now, the water level's a little higher than the other days. So with, with our weight out of the canoe, basically it floats fine, it doesn't scrape the bottom. So we just hop out, push it to the end of the sandbar and then Hop back in the old bobsled style, somewhat like this. And then we get back in. And we continue on our way. It's beautiful out here. Some of this scenery is so far out there that you can't drive in or fly in or get there by any other means but canoe. It doesn't get better than this. It gives you an opportunity to be uh, to be somewhere where, uh, where you never get to normally go or normally get to see, you know. it's. Uh, it's, it's an experience that uh, you can only get by yourself in a canoe. You know, the, the places we get to see, the wildlife that you get to run into, it's, uh, it's just amazing. Sorry for the shaky footage, but um, yeah, we're filming in a canoe while standing. It's not the easiest task. It's a really long trip and we just, we have to push ourselves each day to get as far as we can, as fast as we can. Watch this wall. And we're clear. When we land the canoe for the night, before setting up camp, we check out, we both go up, we scope out the land a little bit, we make sure that uh, we're not on anybody's property. Okay, I'll go check this out. We have the right to be on the shores there and uh, it's all public property, but you know, we, we, we'd like to avoid as many conflicts as we can, you know? You don't want any dead trees over top that could fall on you during the night. You'd like flat land, you want a place with a lot of wood to make a fire. There's a, number of, uh, there's a number of elements that make a good camping location a good camping location. I'd say the fire down there, camp down there, and the canoe right in the middle. So. Once we decided on the spot, then uh, I unload the kitchen gear and Brian sets up the tent. I'm very particular on how the tent goes up. It has to be done fast and efficiently, and obviously set up properly. He won't let me anywhere near it. He, uh, when, when I take too long and... I knew if I left it up to Brian, the tent would take two hours to set up. 
And two, if I don't do everything exactly the way he does it, then uh, then we wasted time. Even if it's 30 seconds, then Brian's, Brian's pissed off. If it takes me over a minute to set it up, I'm pretty pissed off with myself. Because everything in camp, as far as setting up, cooking, tear down and set up, has to go quick and efficient, because we have to do it every day. And the longer it takes us to do that, the less time we get out on the water. Once all the kitchen gear is out, I start, uh, I start looking for firewood and trying to try and get a little fire going. I am the fire master. And I like being in charge of the fires, because when Brian makes the fires, he makes them 10 feet tall. And you know, that might attract some unwanted attention. <laughs> some of these country guys uh, might not be so happy about us being on their property. And uh, who knows, you know, uh, in, uh, in the United States, uh, you know, you, ha you have the right to shoot at a trespasser on your property. And if, uh, if they, uh, they mistake us for, for somebody out uh, up to no good or, uh, or trying to do some harm, you know, we could, uh, we could get ourselves into some serious trouble out here. Because of it being one less thing to set up and limited room in the canoe for supply we could bring, we have to share the same tent and it is pretty tight living quarters. The tent that we brought, it's uh, not the biggest uh, living quarters and you know, I, can, I can think of a better thing to do than sit in a little tent with Brian for five hours. Worst part about that is Brian snores like a freight train. It isn't really a problem for me because I, I can sleep through anything, you know. He's the one that gets right annoyed. The only, the only thing I don't like is when, when I get woken up by him hitting me because I've been snoring too loud. I want a bigger bedroom and a snooze button to the sun. We're on our fifth day. Is it the fifth day of actual travel? Fifth day of actual travel out of Milk River. If you don't count the seven day delay where I was hospitalized at Riding on Stone Provincial Park. We've had our ups and downs on this river so far with it being so dry and us being the geniuses that we are. You know, in two years worth of planning, either of us figured that it was necessary to check water levels in the river, which is kind of a bonehead move on our part, but whatever. <laughs> we started, we're gonna finish. I don't care if it takes us till next year. So, still? See you in New Orleans. I don't know why we feel we gotta hike this mountain. We have a big hike coming up, but no, I wanna get a shot from the top there, you know. No, it'd be a nice shot and uh, it'd be nice to see it. It's important for us to, uh, to you know to stop and take a little uh, take a little break and not only canoe, you know, we're gonna be canoeing for six months and you know, we need, we need to take a little bit of time off and, uh, you know, get, get out and explore stuff. You know, we can't just paddle 12 hours a day, day in and day out. We have to take time to enjoy the beautiful scenery we're passing, the beautiful land we're going through. It's going to be a long time before we do this trip again. We want to see everything we can. So we decided to take a little day off and uh, do some exploring. We gotta hike these regardless because by tomorrow there might not be anything to hike. Yeah, definitely. I mean there will be, but it's not gonna be the same elevation as these. And right now we're pretty well at the peak of this this valley we're in, so we'll go to the top and Yeah. It'll pro I'd say it's gonna take an hour to get up there. And an hour to get down. Yeah, at least. And a half hour shooting on top. Oh yeah, for sure, because I mean it's still it's like it's a good kilometer. It's a kilometer probably just to get to to the mountain base. To the base. And then, then it's probably... Yeah, it's almost a kilometer hike up. Okay, we're leaving camp to hike the mountain. To get a better perspective of exactly where we are on the river. We set off to climb this mountain that we had uh, we'd scoped out and I'd finally convinced Brian to, to take a day to go uh, to go play a little bit. And uh, it was kind of deceiving how uh, how flat the valley was and how, how much closer this, uh, this mountain looked. We actually had a couple hundred meters of, of wading through uh, you know, uh, waist high grass just to make it to, to, to the foot of the mountain. And then, and then we had to climb it. And I mean, not, not to mention that we were carrying all of our camera gear with us and everything we could think that might be fun to bring up a mountain. The mountains were great, you know, uh, not only did it give us a, a day off to, uh, to you know, hang out on, uh, on solid ground and walk around and see things, it also gave us an opportunity to get to the top and, 
and see what uh, what was coming up in the river because when you're down in that valley uh, you can't see anything but the turn in front of you and uh, kind of seemed like we weren't making any progress and uh, you know maybe uh, maybe a nice look around at the top of the mountain will, uh, will let us know how close we are to, to our, our destination. The view from the top of the mountain is quite amazing and uh, it gave us a real good perspective on why it was taking us so long to get down the Milk River because it's just you're snaking back and forth. I mean, one point we traveled, I think, we paddled for eight hours in one of the one day and our GPS had only shown that we'd moved about a mile in a straight line. It was just because you know, we, we wound around for about 30 kilometers. Okay, so we took the morning off from canoeing. We've, uh, we've summited the, the Pinhorn Valley, it's called. It's a, it's a valley just before the 49th parallel that the Milk River runs through. It's, it's quite a spectacular sight. I mean, there's, uh, it's, it rises three, three to 400 feet on either side. Um, it's all basically this sand, solidified sand, like not quite rock, but uh, there's all kinds of canyon, like little caves and stuff running in through it. Um, we've had to watch out on the way up for all of those because, I mean, they just, they're everywhere. There's all kinds of these, these deep crevices. They're probably, I'd say anywhere from, some of them are five feet deep, some of them are 20 feet deep, some of them we can't see the bottom. Down, that's gotta be a good, solid 10 feet down. Don't wanna miss a step there. Ooh, that's a big one too. We were debating whether or not to go down one, but uh, given that it's all this loose sand, it's not quite a dirt, it's pretty like, crumbly and stuff we're and um, we're not too experienced and we're not experienced at all in cave diving so we're not going to play our chances here considering how far away we are from civilization or any medical treatment whatsoever so we're not actually going to go down in any of them but um no it's pretty cool it's quite a spectacular view from up here I mean, we could see we could see how far we've come we could we could plot our our location on our maps, just from the bird's eye view we get from up here. It's, uh, I mean, it's quite a spectacular view to say the least. This was definitely worth taking the morning off. I mean, it's taken us probably a couple hours to get from camp to here, but it's, uh, and it will take, it, it'll take another couple hours to get back, but it's, it's definitely been worth it. It was so nice, we actually took the time to go up and take some nice photos up there. Anyways, that's enough. That's enough enjoying the sights for today. We have to make it to the 49th parallel and that's, uh, that's a good 40 kilometers a day and we're starting at about noon given that we're up top here. It's 10 o'clock and we got another two hours back to camp or hour and a half and then at least a half hour of tear down and packing the canoe. So I think we'll, uh, I think we'll make our way back for, for the base. Yeah, I don't know if you can see here. Um, this this is supposed to be uh, this this canyon, actually they call it. This canyon we're going through because atop these mountains to either side of us, those are the two walls of this canyon. Atop these walls is all to either side. Atop of those, it actually doesn't come back down like a mountain or a valley. These aren't mountains. It's just the walls of the canyon. It uh, it actually plateaus up top, and because we, we we climbed one before and up top it just flattens right out and it's all farmers fields and stuff like that and this this canyon we're in right now that the milk river is running through is supposed to be this is the deepest um, this is the deepest canyon in the canadian prairies which makes it rather cool we saw three helicopters fly through earlier today uh, i guess taking people on tours and whatnot one of our biggest fears before leaving actually before even hitting the water was you know who we might encounter on the way you never know who you're gonna run into we're going to places we've never been we've all seen the movie deliverance uh, it's, uh, <laughs> people can be scary there's all kinds of characters out there in the woods 
it could be a concern. We finished setting up camp one night and uh, we'd, been, we'd been on the river for a couple of days and we, uh, we felt like doing a little bit of exploring. We saw what we thought was, uh, was an old abandoned shack uh, not too far away and we thought, hey, maybe, maybe it isn't abandoned and maybe somebody has beer for us, so uh, let's, go, uh, let's go check it out. Well, we found a beat up old barn slash house and we're gonna go see what it looks like inside. Or at least check it out. See if anybody's living there. Brought the machete just in case. We walked up to this really eerie uh, deliverance style uh, house. You know, I was kind of waiting for somebody to come out and start playing the banjo. And up there, it looks like there's running water. There is running water. It was pretty creepy. Like even just when we were walking up to it, like th there was water running, but there didn't seem to be anybody there or had been there for a while, you know? It was a very creepy, creepy looking place. Let's go see what the farmhouse looks like. pretty eerie house when you got inside. I mean, there was a toilet seat hanging on the wall. Front door is a little rickety. Have to watch your step around here. Shit, there is a pile of kitchen shit in here. I don't even know if I want to walk upstairs. It's definitely got a deliverance type vibe to it. to see a dead body. There was a room full of rusted away mattress frames. Look at that on the wall, dude. What does it say? It's big circles with all kinds of holes. Are those shotgun pellets or what? Those could be shotgun pellets. I don't like this place so much. We were gonna camp around here, but now I think we're gonna go at least. Another hour down the river. Well, we have to go up the stairs. Yeah. Well, I guess I get to go first. Well, I picked to be the cameraman. What does this remind you of? Well, there's definitely bones there. What kind of bones? I don't know. I mm, don't know. Well, I don't know. Look at look at that bone and tell me what bone that looks like. Just a second. We might fall through this freaking floor, dude. Yeah, I know. That's what's kind of making me a little bit nervous. That and the bone on the floor. I don't know, but there's some ripped up jeans there, too. Where? Right there. In the room. Yeah, no, we're not camping here. Let's get the yeah. Cool. And all kinds of creepy stuff. Bones, animal carcasses, uh, some rooms that looked like people had maybe been in them, but, you know, nothing else looked touched in the place. Oh, shit. Yeah, this is definitely the creepiest place I've been to this month. Oh yeah, and we forgot to add that we're, what, a good 50 kilometers away from anybody or anything. This building's not even on the map. You want to go see what the barn has to shed some light on the subject? Yeah, let's go check out the barn. Alright, so this is the barn. I mean, we're starting to get real nervous because there's no roads in or out of this place. So... We don't know who comes here and turns on the water every summer. We actually went out back and we saw this, uh, what we assumed was the barn with, with all the rusted, uh, um, what I think was tools used to slaughter cows or people or something, I don't know. We, uh, <laughs> we got kind of a, a little bit nervous when we saw the, what looked like blood on the wall and got the hell out of there. I don't know, this place is creeping me right the f out, boy. 
I'm hoping that that's just red paint. Where? Does it look like red paint? Not, not so much. But it definitely has a red color to it. It looked like there was blood on one of the boards in the house, so uh, I creeped this out a little bit and it was time to go. We gotta at least put another hour in on the river now, man. Yeah, no, without a doubt. And I was looking forward to stopping and having dinner and, you know, relaxing a reasonable hour tonight. Yeah. Oh, no, man, we're... I don't care if we have to paddle till nighttime, man. We're getting the out of Dodge. All we need now is to see some... Hick pull up in a boat. Let's hit down here. You think so? Yeah. Oh boy, dude. This is one creepy ass place. I was pretty happy to get back in the water after, uh, you know, the things we'd seen at that house. I feel safer on the water. As much as we like exploring uh, new territories, our goal here is to get to New Orleans. So we got to get back in the water and we got to get paddling. <laughs>